It's Miss Jenny here from Worthington Libraries Northwest Library. It's so good to see you guys today. Thanks for stopping by for another story time with me. Let's say hello to all our friends out there with our hello song. Okay, you ready to sing it with me together? All right, let's do it. Here we go. Hello everybody, how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody, how are you? How are you today? Hello everybody, touch your head, touch your head, touch your head. Hello everybody, touch your head, touch your head with me. Hello everybody, tap your shoulders, tap your shoulders, tap your shoulders. Hello everybody, tap your shoulders, tap your shoulders with me. Hello everybody, pat your knees, pat your knees, pat your knees. Hello everybody, pat your knees, pat your knees with me. Hello everybody, reach for your feet, reach for your feet, reach for your feet. Hello everybody, reach for your feet and have a seat with me. Thanks for helping me sing that, boys and girls. Today, the story I want to share with you is Hilda Must Be Dancing. Can you tell me who Hilda is on here? What is she? She is a hippo. Do you know another word for hippo? Well, actually, hippo is kind of like the nickname for a hippopotamus. Can you say that? Hippopotamus. That is a long name, isn't it? Well, in this story by Karma Wilson, remember Karma Wilson? She's written the books like, let's see, Bear's New Friend, Bear's Scared. She writes a lot of those bear books. And then the illustrator of this book is Suzanne Watts. Do you know what illustrator means? Illustrator is the person that draws the pictures in the book. We say she illustrates the book or draws the pictures in the book. Well, in this story, Hilda must be dancing. Hilda, of course, I said is a hippo. And hippos are what? They are very big, aren't they? And they also weigh a lot of weight. How would you like a hippo to come and dance in your house? I don't think I would. What do you think they would do if they came and danced in your house? Remember now, they're really big and they weigh a lot. What do you think would happen? Any idea? Well, in this story, Hilda's friends live outside. And she's so big and she's so heavy. And she really likes to dance all sorts of dances. So it's not a good thing for them. So let's read and find out. Maybe that'll give you some ideas why you really want Hilda dancing in your house. Okay, here we go. Hilda Must Be Dancing by Karma Wilson, illustrated by Suzanne Watts. Here we go, ready? Hilda Hippo loved to dance, and so each day she practiced hard. She twist, she turn, she whirled, she twirled, and dressed in her favorite leotard. She spin a pretty pirouette, and then leap and land on tippy toe. She tangoed oh so gracefully and square danced with a do si do. Oh, and while she danced in utter bliss, us at sound quite a lot like this. Kaboom, kaboom, crash, crash, smash, thumpity bump, thumpity bump, Boom, bang, bash. Oh, the jungle floor shaked and quaked. A tidal wave would fill the lake. Her friends would all shout. For goodness sakes, Hilda must be dancing. Now, when we come to the part of the story where it says Hilda must be dancing, you help me say that? Okay. They all hoped Hilda's hobby was just a stage and soon would pass. 
but after one loud, shaky year, they knew the phase would last and last and last. While Hilda danced the flamenco in her favorite pair of heels, bananas fell in gooey hoops. Oh, and shaken from their peels. Swish, swish, clap, clap, jump, jump, jump. Oh my goodness. Hilda must be dancing, cried the monkeys from the trees. Perhaps she'd take up knitting if we asked her pretty please. Do you think she's going to knit? Let's see. Oh, there she is. What's she doing? She is knitting, isn't she? Hilda tried to sit and knit. She didn't like it, not one bit. The yarn got tangled, so she quit. Mm, I think I'll stick to dancing. She rummed a rum bud, and she saw bud in her favorite flowered skirt. She skipped across the crowded plains and kicked up clouds of dirt. Hip, -a, hip, -a, bounce, bounce. Thump, thump, thump. Oh my goodness, you can almost feel it bouncing, can't you? Hilda must be dancing, said the rhinos in distress. If she'd only take up singing, then she wouldn't make a mess. Think she's going to sing for us now? Let's see. Hilda tried to hum and croon but found she couldn't hold a tune. She tired of it very soon. I think I'll stick to dancing. Oh boy. At the water hall hole, she boogied in her favorite disco pants. She muddied up the river and she trampled down all the plants. Shake a shake a boom boom bump bump bump. Hilda must be dancing. Well, the water buffalo, if she'd only take up swimming, we might get some peace, you know? And so, guess what Hilda did? Any ideas? Let's see. <gasps> Look at her! Hilda wallowed by the shore. She never felt so grand before. Now here's a hobby. I adore water ballet dancing in her favorite two-piece suit. She whirled and twirled with flair. Best of all, the ground stayed still. She floated as light as the air. Look at Miss Hilda there. And while she swam and danced in blitz, it sounded quite a lot like this. Her plop, her plock, plunk, dunk, swish, glubity, glub, glubity, glub, splash, splush, splish. A big crowd gathered at the shore. They cheered, they clapped, and called for more. Her friends cried out, think they're happy now? So she did. Oh, Hilda must be dancing by Karma Wiss. Oh, that was a good story. You know, in that story, there were monkeys. What else were there in the story? Were there other animals you might see at the zoo? There were, weren't there? Well, you know what? Did you guys wear your running shoes today? I hope so. Because we're going to do a little song here where you're going to run. And that song is Alice. The camel. Oh, oh no, she lost part of herself. Let's bring her back up. I brought more into it. So anyway. Okay, so we're going to count down her humps. She has, let's count her humps now. One, two, three, four, five. And so as we count, I want to see your fingers for the number of humps she has. And we get to the part where she runs. I want you to stand up and I want you to run and run and run and run and run. Can you do that? Okay, here we go. Alice the camel has five humps, five humps, five humps. Alice the camel has five humps. 
Run, Alice, run. Be running. Okay, I'm gonna take away a hump. Up. Uh, now how many humps does she have? She should be four fingered. Alice the camel has four humps, four humps, four humps. Alice the camel has four humps. Run, Alice, run. Okay, I'm gonna take away another hump. Up. Uh, now how many humps does Alice have? Three. Alice the camel has three humps, three humps, three humps. Alice the camel has three humps. Run, Alice, run. Okay, I'm gonna take away another hump. Now how many humps does Alice the camel have? Two. Alice the camel has two humps, two humps, two humps. Alice the camel has two humps. Run, Alice, run. Uh-oh, here goes away another hump. Now how many humps does Alice have? Oops, I keep dropping that down. One. Okay, here we go. Alice the camel has one hump, one hump, one hump. Alice the camel has one hump. Run, Alice, run. Uh-oh, now how many humps does Alice have? Alice doesn't have any humps. Alice the camel has no humps, no humps, no humps. Alice the camel has no humps because she is a horse. Oh, thanks for doing that activity with me today, boys and girls. Hey, before I leave you, I have an idea. Have you guys ever done a book scavenger hunt? Do you not even know what a book scavenger hunt is? It's when you take a book and you know, I bet you guys have lots of books at home. And probably during this stay-at-home library time, you haven't been able to come and get more books at the library. But I bet you have quite a few books at home. And you probably read them over and over again. And that is wonderful. So, today I thought something you could do is take the letter of your first name. Maybe have mom or dad, or maybe you can even write it down. The first letter of my name is J. J for Jenny. So what I'm going to do on my scavenger hunt, I'm going to look in my book and I am going to see if I can find any J's in my book. I'm going to look on every single page to see if I can find any letter J's in it. Now I will tell you, I kind of pre-did this, there weren't any J's on the first page. Kind of made me sad. There weren't any on the second page. Uh, I thought, well, I'm just going to keep going and look. There weren't any on this next page or the next page. But finally, I did get to a page and I found J's. Jump, jump, jump. Uh, that looks like a J in my name. So today, why don't you try that too and see how many letters of your first name are in one of your favorite books. And maybe then you can count them, okay? All right. Hey guys, I had fun with you today in story time, but you know what? It's that time to do our goodbye wave. Ready? Wave high. Wave low. I think it's time we've got to go. Wave your fingertips. Wink your eyes. And blow a big kiss. And wave goodbye. Until next time, boys and girls, have a great day. Bye.